Okay, I'm, I'm no expert, but I'm just gonna go over how to troubleshoot a boiler that's not heating, like this old dog right here. So I came in at about nine o'clock this evening after work, and it was fairly warm out today, so my family didn't realize that the boiler was cold. Uh, I went to turn on the dishwasher and the water was, was lukewarm at best. So I came down here and it was 80 degrees. It had been off for a while. So the first thing I did was it was out on safety, which means there was a little red light over here. So I pushed this in, fired right up. You could look in there and see the flame. So it fired right up, but about 25, 30 seconds later, it went off. Did that about three or four times. It fired right up and then it went off. All right, so what you do is, first thing is you wanna make sure there's good oil flow. So I turned off the, and I don't mind this, I'm working on this. I turned off the emergency switch so you don't, that kid didn't kill myself. And I turned off the oil flow. And in my case, I could just shut those two valves over there. Then I came over here. You can actually shut off the firematic, but I left it on. So first thing to see if there's oil flow is I unscrewed this nut and of course I put something to catch the oil that dripped out of here. So there's the filter and it was really dirty. So I had another filter. So I tried, I put the new filter in and then before I ran it, I opened up this little bleeder valve over here, about three or four turns, turned the oil back on, flipped the switch, pushed the button, and there was pretty good oil flow, and the oil was flowing out of here into the bucket. So I knew that this was okay, and the oil was flowing up to here. So far, so good, except the thing kept tripping out again. So at that point, it could be a clog like the main, not the main jet, but the main uh, tip. It could be the electrode. It could be the uh, safety controller, or it could be the CAD cell relay. So the first and easiest thing, and obviously the motor was running, everything seemed to be running. And if the motor is running and it's attached to this, that means the oil is pumping. So the next thing would be the CAD cell relay. Okay, since, I, since it was firing up before, I knew the electrodes were, were working fine. So either to me, it was either the safety or the CAD cell relay. Now, if you don't know what a CAD cell relay is, I keep them. <laughs> I keep them handy just in the house here. CAD cell relay is this. It's about a $20 item. The idea is that it senses the flame. Let's say for argument's sake, the flame went out. If you didn't have one of these, there would be oil shooting into the chamber, but with no flame to burn it, it would just build up. You'd, you'd, you'd lose 400 gallons of oil. It would cause a, a flood of oil into the combustion chamber. So what this does is if for some reason the flame goes out, this says, ah, no flame, and it shuts the unit down. So. For 20 bucks, like I said, I took it out, and it's a matter of, it sits inside of here, kind of like this, pointed at the flame. And it's attached just to these two leads. So I took the, this old one out, because it comes with a mounting bracket. So I mounted the new one, put the extra in there, either one goes on either connector, and that was it. It's been running for the last 45 minutes and it's almost up to temperature now. So my point is these things do go bad. You know, the thing was working fine yesterday. It's been great all season. It's the middle of February today and it just decided the cat cell relay wanted to go. Now, if I didn't have another one, I might have tried to clean this tip. But like I said, for $20 or $25, I keep, I keep stuff. If you've seen my other videos, I have uh, another another power head assembly. I have another transformer. Uh, this is just, actually this doesn't belong here. It's just a regular transformer. But I have another one of those 
uh, ignition transformers. I have another, what? I have another uh, 007 uh, circulating pump. I keep all these things just in case because they're not particularly expensive. I have another oil pump, a Sunco oil pump. So I keep these just in case something goes. I have a few more tips in there. I have this, whatever that is. Uh, you know, in case this stuff goes bad, it's good to have it in the house. So uh, right now, like I said, I got home nine o'clock at night and I didn't have to call anybody. I was able to fix it myself. Uh, here's basically what this is. It's a flame sensor C554A 1465. Uh, this is the box for the old one. I actually just ordered another one just to have in the house. Again, it's not going to go bad twice in one season, but not bad thing to have. You know, again, it saved me from an overnight with no heat. Again, even though it's maybe going to be 20 degrees out tonight, I just don't want it to be freezing and nor do I want to bother the guy, you know, at, at uh, late at night. Got to come out of his house. Yes, we have 24-hour service during heating season. Uh, like I said, yes, I have a contract, but it was way easier for me. I got home, I went to the parts, I spent a half an hour, and we're up and running. And that's the story, so thanks for watching. Pardon the mess. And again, not a how-to video, but just troubleshooting. You know, the boiler doesn't work, this is the steps you take, or at least you try. Worst scenarios, you got to call somebody. Thanks for watching.